In this tutorial we're going to begin looking at lifting machines and essentially what a lifting machine is is a device that can be used to lift an object using a smaller force than would be required to lift it directly. So in the diagram here we see the mass M on the left hand side and what we're going to do with that mass is we're going to lift it directly upwards meaning we're going to have to exert the maximum force in order to lift the object through a distance H. But then what we're going to do is we're going to look at an alternative method and we're going to look at the method of dragging that object up the inclined slope. And what we're going to do is compare the force requirements to achieve those two outcomes. If the force required to drag the object up the slope is less, then we have a lifting machine because the sole purpose of a lifting machine is to reduce the force required to lift an object. And there'll be some consequences to that as we'll see as we go through the tutorial. So first of all then, if we want to lift the mass directly upwards, we'll call that situation 1, then we're going to need to exert a force F in the rope that crosses the pulley. Now that mass M has a weight acting downwards. And hopefully you can see that in order to lift that object or move that object upwards, the force in the rope needs to equal the weight of the object. We're not looking to accelerate the object, we're just looking to lift it at steady velocity. Therefore, the force in the rope must equal the weight of the object, because the two forces need to balance. The force F will be the same as the tension in the rope. So this calculation is very straightforward. The force in the rope is the weight of the object, and the weight of the object is just mass times gravity. So in this case, the force required is 1800 kilograms, times gravity of 9.81, giving us a force requirement of 17,658 newtons. Or if we express that in kilonewtons, we could call that 17.66 kilonewtons. And that's to lift the mass directly upwards, as in situation 1. But let's change things a little bit because this time we're going to drag the object up the slope. So let's change the arrangement of our pulley. So this time we can see that the force in the cable is going to be used to drag the object up the slope. We've seen similar things to this before when we looked at conservation of energy and the simplest way to resolve this is to reset our axis so that our x-axis runs parallel to the slope and our y-axis runs perpendicular as shown we only need to resolve forces in the x direction. So when our object is on the slope and it's being dragged up the slope, it's still going to have a weight acting downwards due to its mass. But only a small component of that weight is going to be acting down the slope, like so. So let's redraw that triangle. We have the weight acting downwards, W, we have an angle of 20 degrees. We have a right angle here. And what we're trying to find is the component of that weight that acts down the slope. That's all we're going to need to overcome in this instance. So let's label our triangle. We've got the longest side is the hypotenuse. We've got the side opposite the angle is the opposite. And the adjacent is the remaining side. So in this case, we're trying to find the opposite on that triangle. Well, from trigonometry, we know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and opposite is hypotenuse sine theta. Now we can plug in our values. We're trying to find the opposite in this case, which is the force acting down the slope. Our hypotenuse is the weight. Well, the weight of that object is still the mass times gravity, so 1800 times 9.81. And our angle, as shown on the diagram, is 20 degrees. Therefore, the force acting down the slope in this instance is 6,039.4 newtons which is the same as 6.04 kilonewtons. So what we've calculated there is the force acting down the slope this way. 
And in order to lift that object up the slope, we need to apply an equal and opposite force. Remember, we're not trying to make that object accelerate. What we're trying to do is keep it moving up the slope at constant velocity. So the force that we apply up the slope needs to balance the force acting down the slope. Therefore, as we've stated here, our force in the cable, F, is 6.04 kilonewtons. And we can see by comparison that that's roughly a third of the force that was required to lift the object directly. Now, as mentioned, there is a consequence because if we slide the block up the slope, we need to slide the block for a longer distance. When we lifted the block directly, we needed to apply a force of 17.66 kilonewtons through a distance of five meters. But if we slide the block up the slope, we need to apply a force of 6.04 kilonewtons and we're gonna to need to apply it across a longer distance. If we refer to our diagram, the distance would be the length of the slope because we would apply the force until the object reached the top of the slope. Well, once again, we can do some trigonometry on this and I'll re-sketch the triangle. We have an angle of 20 degrees. We know that the opposite in this case is five meters and we want to find the length of the slope or the hypotenuse. So once again, we label the triangle. Opposite the angle is our opposite and our longest side is our hypotenuse. And we're trying to find the hypotenuse. Well, referring back to our trigonometry formula here, hypotenuse is opposite over sine theta. Our opposite is five meters and our angle is 20 degrees. Therefore, the length of that slope is 14.6 meters. So although we need to apply a smaller force, we need to apply that force over a longer distance. Let's just do a couple more calculations just to demonstrate what this is telling us. We have a force ratio. And the force ratio is a measure of how much mechanical advantage we're gaining out of this system. And that will be equal to the force lifted over the force applied. Now this machine will only be an effective lifting machine if the force that we're lifting is bigger than the force we're applying. Well the force we're lifting we've said is 17.66 kilonewtons and the force that we're applying is 6.04 kilonewtons. Therefore we have a lifting ratio of 2.9. But the interesting thing is that that ratio will be the same as the ratios to the distances. Because we've assumed that there's no losses here, the distance that we need to drag our object will also be 2.9 times greater than the distance that it's being lifted. And we can check that because the distance we're dragging our object is 14.6 metres and the distance we're lifting it is just 5 metres. So what we see this time is that 14.6 over 5 is also 2.9. Now this highlights our payoff. We're applying a force that's roughly a third of the weight of the object that we're lifting, but we need to apply that force for three times the distance or 2.9 times the distance. And that's something that's common to all lifting machines. Essentially the work done in lifting the object is the same as the energy that's being put into the object.